Hey folks, welcome back to the Horde. Um, just a quick correction. Pokey, I responded to your email. There's actually two running 200X motors in the Horde. This one actually runs also. So, the one out in the driveway and this one. So, my corrections are all good. Anyway, folks, um, I just wanted to show you something. And I had to do... Anyway, let's one thing at a time. My ADD is acting up. Um, let's see. My batteries aren't charged because the sun isn't on them. It is 4.25 p.m., 24.8 degrees Celsius, 47% humidity. Yeah, it actually feels pretty good outside. Look at that blue sky. Top 10 day for sure. It is the 15th of September, Tuesday, almost 76 degrees. Anyway, um, obviously, I got this hoard here, right? And I got to heat this hoard, the house. Um, and you sit down and you figure out what makes the most sense. What choices do I have? What makes the most sense? Burning wood. I have a wood stove in the basement. Um, my wife has piano students, and having a wood stove cooking away in the living room living room with piano students in and out the house is not a good idea, right? Um, I, the last thing I need is some kid to put something on it or to lean against it. They are just too hot, too dirty. Uh, you know, some piano students have uh, respiratory issues. And the last thing you need is a um, wood stove producing all kinds of uh, dust for them, the wildlife folks, the wildlife. So, though I burn it downstairs, I do not burn uh, upstairs. Uh, though I burn in the basement, I don't burn upstairs. And even about burning in the basement, I'm, given how uh, packed it is down there in the hoard, it doesn't even get fired up all that much. So, there's the first thing, wood. Um, second thing, and just to kind of go through the cost real quickly... What I did is I did some math and I tried to figure out how many BTUs you get per penny. So let's say I'm running normal electric resistive heating. You know those things that are you know bolted to your walls that get hot when you turn the electricity on or the portable electric heaters. You get about 227 BTUs for a kilowatt of electricity. And for me, I pay about 15 cents a kilowatt here, which means I get about 227 BTUs for my, 50, for my penny worth of electricity. Let's say I want to burn fuel oil. I get about 138,500 BTUs for $2 worth of fuel oil, which means basically for a penny, I get just under 700 BTUs, 692.5. For pellets, I pay about 5.15 a bag for pellets, and a bag of pellets, 40 pounds times 8,000 BTUs per pound, so I get about 320,000 BTUs for my 40 pound bag of pellets. I pay 5.15 for it, which means I get 621 Point four BTUs for my penny. If you take that cost for the fuel oil, 692.5 and 621, and then you figure pellets are about 90% efficient, oil burners are about 80% efficient, these two numbers come up to be about the same. So whether you're burning pellets or you're burning oil, the cost is about the same, assuming once again, two bucks for a gallon of oil and five dollars and fifteen cents for your pellets. And you could also see you're paying almost a third the price as you would be paying for electricity, right? Because you'd have to multiply that two twenty seven by almost three times to get those two numbers. Last but not least, and the reason why I did all these calculations is I'm considering putting in a heat pump. A heat pump, um, one of those split um, air conditioners, you have a piece outside and you have a piece inside um, ductless air conditioning, air conditioners as they're called. You can get an SEER of about 18, which means for every watt of electricity you put in, you get about 18 BTUs back out. 
So that means if I'm putting in a thousand watt of electricity, which costs me about 15 cents, I'm getting about 1800 BTUs out, which means I'm only I'm getting about 1200 BTUs for my one penny of electricity, which is almost twice as much as the um, as the uh, fuel oil and the bags of pellets, and obviously almost six times as much you know five and change times as much as pure resistance heating so obviously the heat pump is something worth considering on the other side of the coin though a heat pump doesn't do me much good if you start approaching zero you know you start getting around zero Fahrenheit that heat pump this is the newer modern stuff that runs on the um, the the modern Freon variable speed DC compressor and all that kind of stuff. So you're able to get heat down to, I mean, let's call it 20 degrees. Well, for me around here, my normal high-low split in the dead of winter is about um, 35 and 18. Obviously. There are nights where it goes down below zero, even below 10 below zero, at which time you don't want to use a heat pump, obviously, right? Because it's not going to be very efficient. But once again, during most days, I'll be able to get, I'll be able, it'll go over 30, so it'll actually produce some nice heat for me. Um, that's one consideration. On the plus side, the heat pump also does air conditioning, which means I'll air conditioned basically my bottom floor with a um, 24,000 BTU heat pump and uh, and keep things dry and I don't have to have something sticking out of the window your typical window air conditioner has a SEER somewhere around 10 9 or 10 so if I'm getting 18 I'm um, getting twice as much air conditioning for the same price or assuming I don't use any additional air conditioning I'm saving money during the summer when you run up and down these numbers if I'm using this heat pump and let's say getting a quarter of my heat from it right so instead of spending approximately if I'm burning 800 gallons of oil which is 1600 bucks if I get a quarter of my heat from the heat pump and I'm not burning oil and I'm not burning pellets given that they're pretty near the same um, I'll save about 400 bucks a year given that a heat pump costs by the time I'm gonna install it myself but I gotta pay a friend with his um, who has the uh, license for for um, all that stuff I don't want to void the warranty if I install it by somebody who's not licensed I lose the light I, I lose the warranty on the unit so I need somebody who knows what they're doing and they're licensed for what they're doing to actually install it for me or help me install it so um, anyway assuming I give him a few bucks and the kit to install it plus running the wiring and everything else let's say it cost me three thousand bucks so it's about seven and a half years for that thing to pay for itself where are these numbers gonna go well electricity is probably gonna get a little more expensive but so is oil and pellets pellets are up quite a bit pellets I used to pay um, 200 bucks a ton 199.95 now they're um, about 265 a ton, right? Um, oil is not going to be two bucks a gallon forever, right? Th those numbers are going up. So I'm uh, I'm thinking it's not a bad investment. So anyway, just a, uh, a a quick grind through, you know, BTUs per penny, right? My little chart here of BTUs per penny. And you can see 227 for electric resistance heating, 692.5 for fuel oil, 621.4 um, percent on um, 
hardwood pallets but once again 80 percent on fuel oil 90 percent on hardwood pallets those two numbers are virtually the same and once again a heat pump with an SEER of 18 I get about 1200 BTUs for my penny obviously I'd rather get 1200 BTUs so um, another project right just what I need to do jump into a heat pump project but if I'm gonna do it I need to get it done because I really would like to use it during the fall when it's most effective right um, heat pump if it's somewhere between um, 40 and 90 very 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 efficient efficient at cooling off your world very very efficient at heating your world down as you start getting into the 40s 30s still pretty good as you start breaking your way below freezing uh, 32 or 0 Celsius um, they they don't quite do that 18 SEER and once again as you start getting 10 degrees or zero or minus 10 depending on the unit they're they're not effective at all they just really don't produce anything so you can't if you have a place that goes below zero and you want to be you want to keep from freezing when it's below zero you really can't use a heat pump um, because there's no heat to pump out of the air um, this is an air-to-air -air heat pump. So, Anyway, folks, I hope you guys found that educational. Um, if there are any questions, please ask. If there are any corrections, some of you guys who do heating and air conditioning for a living might, might have a, a correction to make there. I looked up um, the definition of SEER in Wikipedia. So that's correct. I looked up all these numbers on the internet, and most of them I had in my mind anyway because I've been playing these heating games forever. So um, there we are. Once again, I hope, hope you guys find this helpful, interesting, and it makes a difference. Obviously, if uh, you get free firewood and collecting firewood is the exercise you get and that's something you enjoy doing, obviously... Um, it's better to go out and get the exercise, right? It's better for your health and everything else. Firewood is just going to rot anyway, so people who say, well, you know, you're burning firewood, it's bad for the environment. Well, if termites eat firewood, they produce carbon dioxide also, so you might as well burn it and uh, get the heat out of it rather than feeding uh, termites. Um, so... There we are. Once again, questions, comments, please get back to me. Folks, I want to thank you for all thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing. Keep your feet down, keep your head out, stay out the buckwheat, and make sure you get out there and enjoy your days. Bye now.